looking to speed up your post processing and clean up all the damage that can come from overhang supports and printing upside down well, i've got the breakdown for you in today's video and it's coming up next Hi, what's up everyone back at it again it is dw darkwing dad and today i'm going to be showing you a video that is just going to help you speed up your post processing on 3d prints particularly when you have really steep overhangs and the supports kind of chew up the model or if you print something upside down or maybe if you print something uh, at a really high layer height and you get that stepping you can do this in a much quicker and efficient time so this video was requested by one of my viewers slash subscribers, Chris Lee. Uh, so Chris, thank you for the motivation as I am diligently working on my Punisher War Machine suit. But I know others can benefit from it. And you know, it's not just uh, the top of prints that you can do this method to. Uh, if you have some really steep overhangs and some areas where the print just gets kind of messy or if you're flipping it upside down, I have a couple examples of the videos. I'll show you guys exactly what I did. Uh, it's three very important components. You're probably very familiar with them if you've watched this channel before. Uh, so without any further ado, let's get into my process on smoothing out these prints. Let's go. Again, this is something that is very common depending on the position of your piece. Uh, where you get that stepping, you know, especially if you're using a higher layer height. As that layer height increases, you're going to get more of a stepping motion here. Uh, I will also use this a lot on other pieces here too with, you know, some of these overhangs and stuff. These just get all mangled uh, depending on how you have them positioned. So uh, this trick with the soldering iron really going to help you speed up your post processing is this gets this knocked down a lot faster. Um, this is PETG, so it's definitely something that takes a lot more effort <laughs> to sand. I like to use a wedge style here. And whether you're using PLA or PETG, you don't want your temperature uh, too high. We don't want to make this so soft that it starts to concave in. Uh, we want it just hot enough to where it's just softening it so we can kind of spread it around. So having a soldering iron with a adjustable uh, temperature setting is, is gonna definitely help you. Very simply just kind of start dragging this over. Now you can mess with your temperature settings. Again, this is pet G is gonna need a little bit higher of a temperature. I know on PLA, I keep it around, you know, the high twos, the low threes, and I wanna keep the soldering iron stationary for too long, start to make little craters, which is just gonna create more work for ourselves. So kind of at a faster pace, but not too fast. And we're just really just trying to smooth this out. So I've always noticed it's good to go with the step and not against the step. Uh, if you go against it, it can actually create little bumps and, and craters and divots and things like that. So you can hear how it's starting to get smooth. Okay, so. What I'll do is typically just take this and just very gently try to smooth this out. And you can see that this whole piece kind of got messed up here because it didn't have any, any support on there. What I'll do is just kind of go through, make sure the camera can see here, and just take the soldering iron and just kind of very quickly just go through these little channels here and just the sides of the side iron, iron just clean it up and it's okay if you get like these little lips that build up on the top part here because you can just sand those down just makes it look way nicer be a lot easier to clean up same thing over here, we got this uh, little... Any overhangs, we got some here. That would be a real pain because you start sanding this and some of these pieces here start breaking off without using that same process here. So the, I guess the layers are this high and this uh, profound, it's okay to put a little bit of pressure. Trying to smooth those out without heating this up, doing the soldering iron smoothing, it's just, it, it's a, I wouldn't say it's a nightmare, it's just annoying because these pieces start sticking up and it just takes forever to sand down and it's just not fun. So the goal here is just to try to get it as flat as we possibly can. A little bit more warm, you can apply a little bit of pressure 
because regardless, we're going to have to use a little bit of puttier filler on this anyways. And as you apply that pressure, that's when it really starts to smooth it out. Key is to not add too much heat, because you can see how this is already starting to flex. Pet G, you can definitely put more, more heat to it before it starts to flex like that. But once you start seeing it flex, you definitely want to move to another area. Now on these corners here, obviously it's got supports and stuff here. It's attached to another wall, so it's going to be a little bit, a little bit easier to uh, put more heat on there before it starts flexing. And a big tip here too is go in different directions. Don't go in the same direction because we want to completely try to flatten this out to as best as we can to, you know, minimize sanding. We still have to sand, but. Uh, started to smooth that out. We're gonna let that cool down. Show you the next process and getting this all prepped and ready. Just a small section of the shoulder piece here where most of the stepping had occurred. And the rest of this, so you can see how much smoother this is. It might not look pretty, but trust me, uh, when you start sanding stuff like this, it just gets all chopped up and it starts sticking up like coconut hairs and it's just, it's, it's a little messy. Uh, this will help us greatly in the sanding process. I like to go ahead and sand with uh, 80 grit. So especially if you're using PETG, don't be afraid to get an aggressive sandpaper, something around 80 grit. Uh, PLA, uh, sometimes I like to start at 120, sometimes 80 is just a little bit too aggressive. I am doing this all by hand. Power sanders can be utilized when they need to be. Um, on stuff like here where we have very detailed areas, you know, the palm sander, if you get overzealous, you know, you can end up knocking this down and rounding it off. So on a lot of my detailed pieces here that I'm using on my war machine suit, guys, you know, I'm doing everything by hand. Quality products that work and you have a good method that has fast dry time and great filling ability, uh, you can get a lot of it knocked down by hand and still help retain uh, that definition. I'm just gonna sand this down real quick here. the ready to use fillers that I like to use the most, of course, Bondo plastic metal is here where there's just some deeper defects. Uh, we can see these craters here. Uh, really not a great candidate for putty. This is Bondo plastic metal. If you've watched the channel before, you know how great it is. You know how well you're able just to apply it on and it has aluminum in it. So it's super hard, super dense. It will not shrink. It'll fill those in the glove on and apply this with my finger. So we just want to get a little bit here and we're just going to go ahead and spread this on. Be very careful. We don't want to put this on anything that has like a crease or a seam because we don't want to fill that in. We just want to fill in these areas and you can see how quick this stuff dries and we're in my shed where it's not very climate controlled. So it's a, it's a warm day today. Now, what I like to do a little bit of acetone in this dish here is I'll take this. That's the beauty of using this plastic metal is it can be reactivated with acetone, uh, a, a certain window basically where you can reactivate this. So what I'm doing here is I'm reactivating this and actually smoothing it out, thin it down in a sense, but I'm not making it too thin to where it's gonna not fill in those gaps. So this is really a neat trick. I like it because it actually does um, cut down on sanding. If you've ever used any sort of body filler, you know that if you don't get it like completely smooth, how much of a pain in the butt it can be to get some of those high spots knocked down. So by just introducing acetone to it, it starts to thin it down and smooth it out. It's just gonna make it nice and easy and quicker to sand. So give me about two minutes here. We'll come back and see how this is. To sit in the sun here for probably two or three minutes while I talk. If you're afraid of uh, messing with acetone or anything, you can just put the plastic metal on with your finger, give it about 15, 20 minutes to dry. The advantage of doing it with the acetone, this will be ready to dry in about five minutes here. Uh, while I do that, um, just some other areas where you can use this technique uh, on a couple models here. Uh, using the soldering iron, uh, it's a very cool trick. You know, not only is it going to save you time, it's actually going to add more of a 
uh, structural reinforcement to your model. I have another example here, this top uh, eye part. Again, this is another place where uh, there was an overhang where you can just take the soldering iron and just kind of melt that back in, smooth it out. Something like this, depending on what infill, uh, you're printing it. You know, if you try to start sanding this down here and you start ripping this PLA off, and that's what'll happen. You'll start sanding it and you'll take off more and more like pulling a string on a shirt. So if we take too much of that off, this area here, depending on your infill, may get weaker. But if we take the soldering iron and melt all of this back in, we're not compromising anything on it. We're melting the PLA that's already there back into the model, making it stronger. Really any area here where there is you know, a heavy overhang. So we got in the nose here, we got down here, we got all through here, you know, go through and reform that line with the soldering iron, you know, bring life, you know, back to the mod. Obviously you can sand it, but you know, I'll tell you, it's gonna take a long time uh, doing things like a file. You're really just kind of making it more jagged. You know what I mean? With the soldering iron, you're smoothing it with this, you're going back and forth. You're not really getting a clean, crisp line. You may have to put putty or filler or something in there to, to just, prolongs the process sagging or anything not taking form not being crisp and as definitive as it could be take that soldering iron go over there you'll be back in business another very popular model too is iron man you know if you're printing it and you're doing it kind of tilted forward a lot of the times these eyebrows here uh, they get really messed up you have to be careful you know on a model like this where it has these separate grooves uh, you don't want to you know flatten that out too much so that might be a combination where you use a lower temperature and just very gently try to smooth it out if you're doing something like an old school mark three or something where it doesn't have those lines go ahead take that soldering iron where it's got the lines just be careful pay attention to it you can always bring that line back to with the soldering iron with a nice fine tip these bottom lips here get chewed up so that's another area uh, that you can use to restore that very cool tip it'll definitely save you some time and definitely have your models look as best as they possibly can when you're post-processing this should pretty much be ready to go. If you're using the plastic metal concentrate without diluting it down with acetone, uh, sometimes this can be a little bit difficult to sand. But the way this is now diluted down, this should sand pretty good with some 220. I go over it with 320, throw some filler primer on here real quick, show you how it works. bondo filler primer lacquer base so it is thinner but once you start uh, to build it up it really starts to compile very nicely is uh, left the piece looking pretty smooth um, really all you have to do once you get to this stage is sand this with a lighter grit typically what i do is i'll sand this with 320 and 400 and then do a final coat of bondo filler primer and it's pretty much good to go so it dries super quick and it is ready to sand in no time so i'm gonna leave this to be safe for about 15 minutes i'll give you a final shot of this piece here that we repaired and i'll give you my final thoughts on this whole process <laughs> You can see after that final sand there with the 320 and the 400 and i just put the last light coat of filler primer on and you know here's the result this is obviously untouched uh, quite the difference and in a pretty timely manner These products here the plastic metal and the bondo filler primer uh they all dry really quick great method great products i uh, hope you guys like it uh, definitely make sure to uh, give me some feedback and let me know what you think of this video. Uh, but for now, I'm going to wrap this thing up and give you my final thoughts. For a fair comparison, I went ahead and did the other part of the shoulder using the same technique, except I did thin down the plastic metal and brushed it on with the acetone. Really, the only thing I recommend when you're brushing on is do two coats. So put one coat on, kind of let it dry, and then put an additional coat on. But I used all the same sanding media, the same amount of coats of filler primer, everything. It came out absolutely awesome. You can see here uh, the top pretty much matches the bottom. So whether you want to apply it on with your finger or brush it on, both methods work absolutely awesome. Final shot here, too, of that red arm cannon I was working on. The next video that's coming out, this is a new product and new method I have for smoothing prints, but I figured I'd give you guys a glimpse of that. Also real quick here, I mentioned about printing upside down. Uh, this was my Kang helmet. This got really chewed up because this was a uh, silk PLA, so it needed a little bit more work, uh, but the same process beginning to end that I covered in the video. Only thing different was I used U-Pull Dolphin Glaze because I was really low on plastic metal at the time. It worked absolutely great. Still have some touch-ups to do, but overall this process was able to restore the form and the overall figure 
Eventually, I'll have updates and final shots of this helmet. But for now, let's recap this video and wrap this thing up. All right, well, there you have it, guys. Uh, there is the video. A nice little tutorial. Hopefully, you will find useful. Definitely something that has a wide variety of uses, both big and small. Maybe you just have that stepping or that pyramiding. Uh, maybe it got chewed up from being printed upside down. Or maybe just a steep overhang where the supports didn't support it as much as it needed to. It will definitely save you time to sit there and cake on body filler. Using that method, smoothing it out will not only help you bring structure back to your piece, but cut down on post-processing and leave you with an awesome result. You know, I've used this method for a while. Every time I print something upside down and I'm finishing it, I've done it on multiple Moon Knight helmets. I did it with Darkwing Z's Moon Knight helmet. A lot of the Iron Man helmets, you know, it's no secret that when you print something upside down, you can definitely cut down on print time. Uh, but of course, you gotta spend a little bit more time on smoothing out those areas where printing it upside down kind of flattens it out, creates those separated segments and whatnot. But using a technique like this can definitely help you get that done faster and still give you awesome results. If you liked the video and found it helpful, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to drop me a comment. You know I will hit you back. Like I said, really the biggest thing is, is the products that I use. You know, this Bondo Plastic Metal, uh, the Bondo Filler Primer, the Soldering Iron, those are the three main components. Of course, you can use other things. A lot of people like to use Duplicolor. There's other body fillers that you can use, like I mentioned, you pull Dolphin Glaze. Again, uh, if you have anything that you use, maybe that's a tip or a trick that I didn't cover, go ahead and drop me a comment. Uh, if you're on our Discord, go ahead and drop that on the Discord channel too. Feel free to share it with everybody on the channel. Tips and tricks uh, that could be beneficial to others. So, of course, if you have anything, feel free to go ahead and share it with us. I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching the video. Each and every one of my subscribers. Uh, if you guys seen that short of that new smoothing process that I have, yes, that is coming. You guys were probably excited and thought it was this video, but I want to get this video done. Definitely think it will help you. If it did, make sure to give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment. If you like all the things that you're seeing, 3D printing, Marvel, Funko Pops, DIY, all the stuff we're doing, make sure to click that subscribe button. Patiently waiting for that smoothing video. Make sure to click the notification bell. It will be out this week, along with additional updates, work that I'm doing on my Punisher War Machine suit. Trust me, the updates are coming, and there will be a lot more from DW. That's it for now, guys. Easter's tomorrow. I got to start coloring some eggs and doing some stuff with the kids, but I want to thank each and every one of you for watching this video. Give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment, click that subscribe button, and until next time, it's DW out. Later.